whoa, this is a, man, I've been excited about today. I, I'm nervous and I'm excited. When I don't get nervous and I don't get excited about preaching the gospel, I need to quit. But today I'm a little more nervous and a little more excited. But um, I want to preach to you for the next few, four or five hours. Um, half the people that left, but at uh, least in their minds. But uh, no, I want to talk to you today on this topic of um, Resurrection Sunday, obviously, but on the, the idea of the invitation. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, glory to God. Kids, you can be gone. If you're a visitor and your kid's leaving right now, we promise we're going to get them back to you, okay? Let me just say that. I forget that sometimes. I told you I was excited, didn't I? And so, uh, kids, you're going out here. You meet uh, our wonderful um, children's church pastors and leaders out there. They're going somewhere that away. Glory to God. Again, you're going to leave with at least the same number of kids you brought. They may not be yours. That's up to you to figure them out and get them back. But uh, no, we, um, we love your kids. And we're thank, so thankful for our volunteers that uh, every week go and, and, and participate and do um, prepare and have classes for our kids so that you can enjoy the service. Amen. I was, so I want to talk to you today um, on this idea of, of an invitation. How many of you ever gotten an invitation to something? You, you get an invitation to a party. You get an invitation to a wedding. You get uh, invitations to all kind of stuff, to, a, to dinners and, and different things. And some even want you to respond. How many of you got those RSVP? And, and then if you don't RSVP in the allotted time, somebody calls you. It's like, well, if I was going to come, I'd already responded, right? But since I didn't, you're going to. So that, that's the idea I want to talk to you. You know, you're invited, uh, you're invited to, a, to a party. You're actually invited to a, a wedding. And this invitation um, doesn't necessarily require your RSVP. On your part, it's needed. But it doesn't, it's not required that you respond. It's called the gospel. But I want to read to you something about in the Bible here in a minute from Matthew chapter 22. If you have your Bibles, you're turning there. But I want to talk to you first on this idea. What is Easter? What is Easter? What's a big deal? What's the big deal about Easter? Well, it all depends who you ask. If you ask an atheist... It's just a bunch of religious fanatics getting together to celebrate somebody's resurrection that never lived. Come on. If you ask uh, some of the others, it's about the cross. If you ask others, it's, it's about a tomb. If you ask others, it's about the resurrection from the tomb. You can get a, uh, whatever answer you really want, you can get it. Just ask enough people. And so... Resurrection Sunday is, is more than all those, but yet it's all of those. It is about the tomb. It's about the cross. It's about the resurrection. It's, it's all summed up in, in that we, we, because of the cross and the tomb and the resurrection, you have a Savior. Amen. You get an invitation because of this act 2,000 plus years ago. You get an invitation free of charge to a marriage, to a wedding. You're invited. Now, I've never been, didn't want to go to a lot of weddings just to be going to a wedding. I showed up at mine. Yeah. Um, my daughter's, and I couldn't even do what I was supposed to do. So my sons, I've showed up to a lot. I've preached a lot of weddings. Now, Michael, uh, Mackenzie, y'all didn't know I was going to pick you on you, but I, I, this whole message is going to be about you. No, I'm kidding. It's not about you. But so, so they're fixing to get married. Say, wave at everybody up there. And I would have you stand up, Michael, but I'll have her stand up because she's better looking. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but they've started sending out invitations to weddings. Now, don't ask Michael a thing. We finished marriage counseling this week. In the last session, I always talk about uh, the the, the ceremony and what I need to do and what I need to wear and what time I need to be there and all that stuff. And I never ask the man, 
You know why? They don't know. I asked Michael. Michael, I, I asked them together. Well, what about so and so? His his immediate response. He just looked at his future wife. He's learning so much, so fast. Don't answer a thing until you get the okay from your honey to say something. And and she said, you know, you don't know. And I thought, man, this is going to be an awesome marriage right here because he don't know a thing and he knows he don't know anything and he had, he needs to get an okay from his little honey. But they sent out invitations. Guess what? You don't have to come. You don't have to come. Not at all. You don't even have to respond. But they sent the invitation out, and you're welcome to come. If you got the invitation, you're welcome to come. And, and I know them, even if you didn't get an invitation, you're welcome to come. Can I say that? You got to have enough to eat for everybody to eat? Okay. So everybody's, everybody's invited to go to their wedding on May 4th. See, I could have saved you a lot of money. You could just let me do it from here. But an invitation has been sent. And when Jesus died on the cross, an invitation was sent that day. There, there were invitations being printed up, if you will. Printed up in this word. Upon every heart, there was an invitation that was available to everyone who would. If you find your place in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. I'm going to read from this paper because I can't see that small print in that Bible. I'm glad I printed it off, Woody. You need to start bringing me some reading glasses in case I need them right there. <clears throat> Amen. Well, that's even better. <laughs> but the split screen gets me right there. Can we, can we flip it to a different screen there? So um, Matthew chapter 22 verse 1 says, And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said. Now who's speaking? So if you have a Bible like mine, I have a red letter edition Bible. That means that what Jesus said is in red. That means you can count on it. You can bank on it. It's true. It's right. You don't have to worry about anything else. You can take it to the bank, as my daddy used to say. And so this is written in red. It says, and Jesus answered, spoke to them again in parables and said to this, verse 2, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. Now, if you're tracking with me at all, you kind of putting this together already. That there was a king, we'll call him God. And there was a son, we'll call him Jesus. And God prearranged a wedding that you're going to get to be a part of in a minute. I'm going to show it to you. It says in verse 3, and he sent out his servants to, all, to call on those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. You don't have to go to the wedding. No more than you have to go to Michael and Mackenzie's wedding. You don't have to go. You can have the invitation. Say, well, that's real nice. If you're not going to go, at least send them $100. Come on, somebody. 50% ties. And so, but you don't have to go. No more than you, you don't have to go no more to their wedding than you do to the invitation that God is sending out, that the Holy Spirit's sending out to you today. You don't have to respond. You can sit in your seat. And you can say, man, that was a great message. The pastor looked really good. The worship was good. The building was comfortable and nice and the chairs were great. But, and you don't have to run, respond and you can leave. You can absolutely leave. You don't have to respond. Next verse. And again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, uh, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and the fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. Come to the wedding. Next verse. But they made light of it and went their ways. One to his own farm. And another to his business. And the rest seized the servants that were taking out the invitation. And they treated them spitefully and they killed them. You do not have to respond to the invitation that God gives you. I will tell you that the Bible says God's spirit won't always strive with man. I will tell you this, that, that if you call on the name of the Lord, you can be saved. But there's a time, the Holy Spirit you, says you can't be saved unless you're drawn 
by him, by invitation, if you will. He sends out an invitation to your heart. He, he pulls on your heart. He takes your, your heart and begins to massage your heart. He is, he is a sending this invitation, much like you would send out an electronic invitation on, on your social media, your YouTubes, your, your whatever they say, what are you, the Twitters, and the, no, it's not Twitter anymore. It's X. It's X. And, and, and what's the other ones that we do? Facebook and Instagram. Well, that's fitting because you can get it right now. You can get all of these invitations by these things. And that's kind of what we're reading here. He sent out his servants because they didn't have Facebook. They didn't, have a, they didn't even have mail servers, really. And he sends his servants out to invite people. And you see what happens? I'm busy. Don't bother me. I, I've got a farm to run. I've got a business to run. I, I've got things I've got to do. And, and the invitation is not that important. I, I really don't care. And he made some so mad that when the servants came, they abused them and they killed them. Dude, I'm just inviting you to a wedding. Don't kill me at the end of the church, okay? It's okay. It's an invitation that you have the option to respond to. Next verse. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. Y'all know who we uh, are saying the king is, right? When the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies and destroyed those murders and burned up their city. Does that give you a picture of what's going to happen in the future? Christ is coming back for a people that is without spot or without blemish, that are blood-bought, saved, and on their way to heaven. That's who he's coming back for. And if you reject him today, it's like saying, I don't want your invitation. But when he comes back, he's going to destroy what's left of this earth and the people in it. Yep. It's an invitation, though, but you don't have to respond. It's totally up to you. You don't have to respond. Then he said in verse eight to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. What makes them? I, I was confused. I said, Lord, I thought here that anybody could come and he invited all. It's the ones who reject him. They're not worthy. If you reject Christ, that's the ultimate blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is rejection of Christ on the invitation to come and be part of his. He's a loving God. He sent you out the invitation when you didn't deserve the invitation. He sent you an invitation when you weren't looking right, when you weren't smelling right, when you didn't talk right and you didn't live right. He sent you an invitation and says, but if you come to my wedding, I can fix your life. I can save you. I'll set you free. I'll deliver you. And I'll forgive you of your sins. But you must accept the invitation. But you don't have to. You don't have to accept it. Next verse. Therefore, so he sends out servants again. Therefore, go into the highways and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and they gathered together all whom they found both bad and good. Come on, somebody. I've been in that bad group before. And, they, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Now, this also is metaphorically, this is talking about when Israel rejected him too, that, that the gospel went more beyond the Israel, beyond the Jews. It went to the Gentiles, and here you are, and praise God, we get an invitation too. Amen. So you have this invitation to this wedding. Next verse. If I can get my worship team to come up at this time. But when the king came in to see the guest, so just imagine, if you will, we've got this wedding hall and it's filled with all kind of people that have an invitation. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to live on the right side or the wrong side of the track. You don't have to make a certain amount of money. You don't have to wear certain clothes. Look, it is an invitation, and when you get the invitation, all you have to do is show them and say, I've got the invitation. The invitation you have to respond to. 
You take the invitation and you say, I got this invitation from you, God. And I'm responding and I'm coming to you. I'm coming to the wedding. Here's my invitation. You sent it to me. I'm here to tell you that God has sent you an invitation time and time again, many of us, but you don't have to respond. You can reject Christ today, you can reject him tomorrow, or you can accept him this moment if you don't know him. It's totally up to you. And he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. Verse 12, the king says, so he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to his servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You say, but wait a minute, he was at the wedding. Yes, but he rejected the invitation. He showed up because, watch this now, I'm gonna preach just a minute, because that's what we do. I saw everybody going, so I showed up at church. I just go to church because my wife pushes me to, or my husband, or my kids, they just nag me because they they like the children's program and I gotta go. You can be at the wedding and not have an invitation, not respond to the invitation. You must respond individually to the invitation. Your wife can't do it, your husband can't do it, your children can't do it, your grandma can't do it, your grandpa can't do it, you have to respond. Last week, uh, we were keeping our grandkids. My wife was sitting in a chair and as, as our kids do, they all on her, they never on me. Something about the Ninas, come on somebody. You precious grandmothers. She was sitting on the arm of the chair and we got on something about going to hell. I don't know how we got there, but you know, with a six-year-old, it's not a problem. You can go anywhere. And I said, well, you don't want to go to hell. And she said, I'm not going to hell. This is my six-year-old granddaughter. I'm not going to hell. I said, well, how do you know you're not going to hell? She said, because my daddy's saved. Come on, this is a six-year-old. And my mama's saved. And my Nina's saved. And my papa, he's the pastor. And I said, wait a minute. That don't get you to heaven. She said, yeah. And she done her finger like this six-year-old. And she said, but I asked Jesus into my heart. Come on, somebody. I'm here to tell you that you got to respond to the invitation. None of my grandkids will get into heaven because I preach because their mother's on a worship team or anything. None of that whatsoever. It's because they take the invitation that Christ had given them at six year old or 106. And you're welcome to come as long as you accept the invitation. What better day today to change your life around than on Resurrection Sunday? This is why There was a cross and a tomb and a resurrection so that he could send out the invitation so you could respond without the resurrection. There's no invitation needed. There's no heaven to go to. He's just another dead man in another cold tomb. But my Bible tells me that he was the first fruits of the resurrected. And because he was the first fruits from the dead, guess what? You too can live. You can live and be a part of the kingdom of heaven for eternity. You will spend eternity somewhere. I said you will spend eternity somewhere. If you say, well, I don't accept Christ, I'm just going to die. You're going to die absolutely correct. You will die. But you will spend eternity in torment. We find a little snippet of what hell will be like with the rich man and Lazarus. If you study that much, you'll see that there's a consciousness in heaven. Remember the rich man called out and said, I'm thirsty. Remember he said, if you'll send Lazarus, there's a consciousness, there's rationality. If you'll send Lazarus to dip his 
finger in water that I may cool my tongue. You're going to, you're going to find that in, in scripture that torment is in hell. And if you reject the invitation of Christ to live and reign in your life, my dear friend, that is your fate. Eternity to all. Eternity in heaven or hell. What will it be? You do not have to accept the invitation. You can be busy and go about your daily life just like the invitation went out. I'm busy. I've got to go do this and I've got to go do that and I've got a business. You just don't know how busy I am, God. I wonder if God sits in heaven and says, well, I'm fixing to free you up a lot of time. When you die, you'll have all the time you ever need. It's called eternity. You'll have plenty of time to accomplish what you want to do. Why do we value and put, put so much value on this 70, 80, 90 years of life and we think if we don't get it all done in here, then, then nothing will be accomplished. I'm talking about eternity eternity. Oh, I wish I had a, a good way to, to explain eternity. There's just no good way because we have a clock and we, we look at time by seconds and minutes and hours and days and months and years and decades and so forth. We, we, we got this thing down. We've got time broken down. But God, do you know there's no clock in heaven? Do you understand that he's not working? He, he doesn't, your 70 or 80 years is, is nothing to him. What will you do with the invitation? He sent out an invitation when he got out of the grave. He sent an invitation to your house postmarked 2,000 years ago, postmarked when you were in your mother's womb and you didn't even know you was there. He said, I know you. He postmarked it and it has your name on it. Before your mother or your father ever put a name on your birth certificate, he said, I'm sending you an invitation. Amen. Will you respond to the invitation? My grandbabies have a birthday party. I don't get an invitation, David. Save the stamp. I'm going to be there. Unless I'm dead, I'm there, and you don't have to worry about it from that point. I don't need an invitation to show up to those things in my life like that. But you got to have an invitation, and I had to have an invitation some 40 years ago. I had to have an invitation to come to Christ. And I took that invitation, and I said, Lord, I'll respond to you. I'll RSVP. I want you to know that I'm coming. I'm gonna live my right because I want you to know I'm gonna show up. My life is gonna be right. Lord, I'm gonna do my best because I want you to know I'm coming. I'm responding to the invitation. Lord, I'm gonna win souls for you because I'm responding. I want you to know I'm coming. Amen. Put me on the books. At the top of the page, there is a book called the Book of Life. And when you get to heaven, if your name is not written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, you cannot in heaven, just like the guest. He'll scroll down the book and he'll look at so many people that go to church and you'll say, look again. God, look again. I've been to church all of my life. Pastor, or God, I sang in the choir. I don't see your name. But I gave so much money. I don't see your name. I've got to be in there because I did all the right religious things. And when everybody went to church, I was there. There was a guest that was there when God showed up with his book. He said, who are you? You haven't responded to the invitation. His words will be, depart from me. I never knew you. You must be born again. 
You must be blood bought. Your sins must be covered by the blood of Jesus. And if they're not covered by the blood of Jesus, I'm here to tell you, you're living a false life. You must be born again. Nicodemus, ask him, what must I do to be saved? He gave him a list of things and he said, you must be born again. I said, you must be born again. The way to be born again is to accept the invitation that has been given to you. There's another parable about someone, a thief, trying to get in inside the city walls. He said, if you don't come through the gate, that narrow gate, and you try to come up some other way, you'll be caught as a thief. And the Bible says that thieves cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's by invitation only. Verse 13, or verse 14, I'm sorry, verse 14. Jesus says this, you you need to get these words in your spirit. They resonated in my spirit. This probably the shortest verse of of this passage of scripture. And it says, for many are called. In other words, many are given an invitation. Let me break that word. Many down means all. It doesn't mean a select few. It means all. If you speak in metaphorically, the many is talking about Jews in Jerusalem and Israel. But when you go beyond that into where we are today, that is all people. All get a, a called. You're called to be in the wedding feast. But if you're chosen, what is he saying that he picks and chooses? No, 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 it's not what he's saying at all. He's saying if you are chosen because when you accept the invitation, he says, come in. You're, cho- you're doing the choosing. But if you're trying to get in, he says, wait a minute, you didn't accept the invitation. Pastor, do I have time? As long as you have breath in your life, you have time. You could be on your deathbed and cry out to God with belief in your heart and sincerity and God will save you on your deathbed. But that is too risky, friends. There's too many people dying and going to hell because people are waiting till the last moment to accept Christ. We need you in the battlefield now. We need you blood bought, born again, on fire for God so we can win souls. Make disciples is what he says. What are you waiting on? Pastor, it's so fun doing what, I just, I love my life. I don't want to quit doing this and I don't want to quit doing that and, and, and what, I got to give up this person. Well, so what you got to give up, ho-ho? So what you got to give up adultery? So what you got to give up drunkenness and lying and cheating and thieving? So what you got to give up drugs? So what? I'm here to tell you that when you taste of the Lord, the Bible says, oh, taste and see that he is good. He is better than any drug you'll ever take. He's better than any alcohol you'll ever drink. He's better than any sex you'll ever have. Amen. He's the God of all gods. And he sent you an invitation. Will you respond? In Revelations 19.9. It's an angel speaking to John, John the Revelator, and he says, Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called, watch this, called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true sayings of God. There will be a marriage. You are the bride of Christ, scripture teaches us. Jesus is the bride. I'm a bridegroom, and you are here on invitation. You get an invitation to go to this wedding that Revelation says, he says, write them down, John, because people won't believe it. There's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. But you got to respond. Whether you respond or not, sir or ma'am, there will be a marriage supper of the Lamb. Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to be in the marriage? 
Do you want to be married to Christ? Here's the deal. Here's the catch about being married to Christ. You got to get married now. So many people in churches, and I see them, I run in those kind of circles. Believe it or not, as your pastor, I know other Christian people. I talk to pastors. I see things. I'm, I'm involved in different stuff, and, and I see these things happening, and so many people are just dating God. They've got a prolonged engagement for years and years and years. And all of a sudden it says, well, they're just together. And you see couples all the time. They're just together. And you think, well, they're together. They've been together. Are you married? I ain't never been married to them. What? Well, you've been together for 20 years. What's the holdup? I don't know. My son dated Shelby 19 years. First time they went out, he had a diaper and a bottle. She was so young. Look, I'm picking on my daughter-in-law. I love my daughter-in-law. I love my daughter-in-law. They don't know that I do, I'm planning this stuff when they come around me. They dated for three or four years, and I remember he was so excited, he called me, had it right out here at the church. We do everything to church. Glory to God. Yeah. Don't make you any more sanctified, but I, I like it. He, he proposed to her out there in the new building, and he, and he come to him, and I, I came, and he said, he texted me, Dad, I did it. Thank God we've been riding around town for the last hour. I want you to get that, send us that text and tell us you've done it so we can show up. <laughs> and so we get here and he comes and he says, yeah, I was, oh man, this is so good. I said, when you get married, he said, dad, I'll just ask her. I said, you've been dating her for four years. How long does it take for you to figure it out? You got another period of time here you got to go through so you can figure out if you want to marry her? <laughs> I thought that's why you were dating her. I'm a simple kind of guy. I think we got people in the church dating God. We date him and we get close and we'd like to have a little relationship with him, but not too much because we don't want to get hooked up with you too tight because then you might require us to, to do something that we don't want to do. Well, let me just give you a news flash before you respond to the invitation. There's going to be things you've got to give up. There's got to be some things that you're doing now that you won't do then. If you don't have to change your lifestyle, then you don't need God. You're already perfect. I'll give you another newsflash. You ain't perfect. Neither am I. It's by invitation only. Invita what are you going to do with the invitation? What will you do with the invitation? It's totally up to you. It's totally up to you. You get to respond. Say, well, Pastor, I, I tell you, I, I, I want to be closer to God, but I, I just don't know. Let me tell you something, friend. You better figure it out while you're still living. Because you won't get to stand in a little room somewhere on the side as he's in, inviting people to come in and they're coming into heaven and say, well, now, I, I made up my mind, I want to. I've, I've got to look through the window of heaven. Yeah, that looks like a good place. No, sir, no, ma'am. You have to make up your mind right now by faith in Christ through grace that you can be saved and that you will be saved or you won't be saved when you get to heaven. See, as a Christian, when you die and you go right up to heaven, you're not judged there. If you're there, you're there. There's a great white throne judgment coming later that, that judges the righteous and unrighteous, but you're not even judged there. You're judged for your acts and your deeds, but you're already blood-bought, born again. You ain't leaving heaven. It's worth it to me to go on and let's settle that up now. Go on and settle that now. Let's get that invitation sent back, honey, the RSVP, because I want a good seat. Do you want a good seat? Or do you want a good seat? There is a difference. You can come into this house and you can sit on this thing here and you can not be involved in church and you can tell me you're a Christian, you can do all these things, but I'm telling you, if you're just coming to church, we got a lot of people that's coming to church that ain't really saved. I love you and I ain't, I ain't beat you up. I'm just telling you, we got people coming to church that ain't saved. We got people that sit on the pews and they'll, they'll say one thing and do something different. You ain't saved. It's time that you get right with God. It's time that you put away sin, that you say, I won't sin anymore. I'll be covered by the blood of Jesus, but I'm not going to practice sin any longer. Amen. I'd be wrong if I didn't tell you that sinning is wrong. 
When I get to heaven, I'm going to give an account for everything I tell you. Every person that's come through this building as your pastor, I'm going to give an account to it. And I won't get there. I won't, I won't, I won't get to heaven. And he said, you never told him about sin. You never gave him an invitation. You never told him that sin would send him to hell. You never told him about hell. There'll be a lot of things that I'll have to give an account for, but that won't be one of them. I challenge you today. Get right with God. The time is near. There's so many things happening right now around the world that most of you don't even have a clue about what's happening. You don't even know what happened this past week up at the White House. and You don't, you don't know anything that's going on in the world whatsoever and all the things that are lining up. I'm telling you, Christ is coming back and he's coming back for a church, a bride that's without spot and without wrinkle, without a blemish on it. Christ is coming back for a blood bought church, a blood bought bride of Christ. Will you be in that number? Will you stand with me across this building? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Every head bowed and every eye closed in this building. Lord Jesus, an invitation was sent over 2,000 years ago. Lord, today I just reread the invitation to people who may not have known about the invitation. I reread the invitation that is to all, to those who may have heard about it, but kind of got lost in the mail, got lost in the bottom of the pile. Lord, the invitation has been recited today through your word. Holy Spirit, We ask you to move upon people right now that may not have ever accepted the invitation. Holy Spirit, we ask you right now to move upon the people that know about the invitation, that say they're going, but they really hadn't made preparations to go. Lord, we pray you'd move upon their hearts today. I bind every spiritual demon in this place that, that comes against people and say, well, what are people gonna think? But the pride. What are they gonna think if I go down? I've been going to that church so long, they just thought I was saved. It's not about what I think. It's about what he knows. It's about what you know. It's about the invitation. Have you responded to the invitation? Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Have you asked him to forgive you of your sins? Have you said, Lord, wash me clean as David did in Psalms 51? Have you asked him? Have you asked him? If you hadn't asked him, I want you to make your way right now. I want you to come to these altars. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. I want you to come. I want you to come quickly. The, the Holy Spirit's moving in this place right now. I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. Make your way to these altars. Make your way. Make your way. You say, well, maybe, maybe I've, 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 I've been down there 10 times, Pastor. Come 11. Come the 11th time. Come one more time. Come one more time. Come one more time. His mercy and his grace endures forever. Come one more time. Come one more time. One more time. One more time. I, I, I want you to respond. I want you to respond to the invitation today. You're not guaranteed an invitation tomorrow. I don't use scare tactics, I use the word of God. You're not promised tomorrow. Give your heart to him today. Make him Lord of your life. Become the servant of the most high king, as Daniel says. Please, please respond to the invitation today. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Come on, saints, I need you to pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Make your way to these altars today. Make your way to these altars. He is calling you. Please don't base your response on religion or membership or because someone else was saved and you've just always done it that way. You must be born again. You must have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. You just lift up your hands all over this building and begin to thank the Lord for what he's doing here and these people that have come to the altar this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that salvation is still available to us. Lord, that the blood of Jesus Christ has not run dry. Lord, that the power still is available in the blood and through the blood to set men free. Lord, to save us from our sins. Lord, to heal and deliver us. Lord, from all of our afflictions. Lord, the blood of Jesus is powerful. The blood of Jesus still has power to save and set free. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for love and serve, mercy and grace, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the response here today, God. Response today, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the response today, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm here to tell you that the Bible teaches us that when one comes to Christ, that all heaven rejoices. Can we rejoice with these today that have come and given their heart to the Lord? Can we do that with them? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. RT, will you get a little information from them? And I want to say thank you as they continue to pray. I want to say thank you so much for being with us today on Resurrection Sunday. The preaching won't be any better next week if you come back. Won't be any worse either. Because it's God's word we teach here in this house. We are excited. We're so thankful that you came out today. I pray you have a wonderful and blessed week. I'm going to bless you before we go. But know this, that you don't have to respond to the invitation just in this building. Just when the pastor gives an altar call, you can respond to Christ when you walk out the door, when you get in your car. You can respond this afternoon laying down. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can. Because when you leave here, let me hear you, let me tell you this. When you leave here, the spirit that is in here right now is drawing you and pulling you and wooing you in, into his presence the enemy will hit you and to try to divide and put a blank of dullness and say, boy, that was great, but they were pretty emotional there. I am an emotional pastor. Because I don't want to go to hell. I am an emotional pastor because I love Jesus. I love Jesus and I get emotional about it. I get excited when people give their heart to the, to the Lord because they're not gonna go to hell, buddy. We got more disciples. Thank you, Lord. Let me bless you before we go. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Have time with family and Amen. good meals. Whoo! And chew on this old message as my daddy said, like a cow chewing on old cud. Just think on it a while. Father, I thank you for your wonderful, precious people in this house. Lord, I ask, Lord, as we leave here, that your face would shine upon us, that we would find favor with God and with man. Lord, that raises and promotions and increase would come our way. And that, Lord, peace would rest over every rooftop 
that when we lay down this afternoon or tonight, that sweet sleep would come to our spiritual souls and our fleshly bodies. And we're gonna give you the praise and the glory and honor in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. And everyone says, amen and amen. God bless you.